Hey guys, it is a new year and a new month. It is Janu- as of today, it is- as I'm filming this, it is January 1st. Um, and I wanted to let you know, I- if you haven't watched my other pre- my previous videos, the- my Christmas haul, and then my, um, what is it? I'm drawing a blank here. Um, my 2018 resolution slash goals video. If, if you haven't watched those yet, um, I just want to, I just wanted to let you guys know that I apologize if my voice is a little, sounds a little groggy and nasally, but I have currently t obtained a cold from, um, but it's that time of year for us, so, it's, but to me, a cold, it's more annoying than anything, there are worse, um, health issues I've had than a cold. Although it doesn't help because I have to work early tomorrow morning, and I'm not gonna ask off just because I have a cold. But let's just say I might be taking my Benadryl a lot earlier this morning, a lot earlier tonight, so I can go to bed at a more decent hour. And hopefully, I won't be as sleepy tomorrow morning when I go into work. <laughs> but this video, um, this one is going to be about my um my um my tbr and what i like to read this month now there's no guarantee i'll read all these books because i get very excited and i have trouble deciding what books i want to read so it's like it's like i jump you know i just pick a whole bunch of books that i'm excited about in the moment that i'm gonna read but i probably won't get to those um so let's see i will start with books that I am currently reading that I started as of December. Um, this first one here Grab it. Okay. I'm gonna I started reading Heartless. I finally got around to reading Heartless. I am currently actually rereading um, the Lunar Critical series and Scarlet is also a book that is on my list. Uh, on this TBR this month, and I'm, in, I'm just going to continue it. I already started in December. This is the second book in the series, which, if you are unfamiliar with the Lunar Chronicles, it is basically a sci-fi retelling of fairy tales. Um, the world has experienced Earth has experienced and four world has experienced four world wars, and um, there are people that live on the moon, and the Lunar Queen, Queen Levana, who's supposed to be like the evil queen in Snow White, and she wants to marry the Emperor of New Beijing, Beijing or the new Emperor, because his father has died of a disease that has affected Earth. And she wants to, she wants to marry him under the pretense of uniting the Lunars with Earth. And Lunars are basically people with um, that live on the moon, and oh, they have the gift to manipulate bioelectri bioelectricity, which means they can control your mind, and they can make you see what they want you to see, and the story, the first one centers around Cinder, who is this gifted mechanic, mechanic who is part cyborg, and Prince Emperor Kai, or Prince Kai, as he is in the beginning of the book, goes to her with his android that is broken, and he asks her to fix it. Because, he doesn't tell her this, but you find out later in the book that the android has possible, has information on the lost princess, Selene, who they believe to, they once believed to be dead, but now he has, re he has reason to suspect that she might not be dead. And he would rather have her on the throne than Queen Lavana. And it's, um... And it's in, like, and then the other part of the plot is that Cinder, Cinder's stepsister in Pianoni, I don't know if I'm saying her name right, she contacts the disease, the lutimosis, I don't know how to say it. I would have to hear it, like, either on, you know, an audio of this series or, like, if they made a screen for adaptation of this series. Or I mean, I, if I ever met Marissa Meyer, I could ask her how you're supposed to say it. And she, um, they believe, and her stepmother thinking, already hating Cinder, thinks that, you know, Cinder probably, it's Cinder, blame Cinder, that Cinder thought that Peony has contacted the disease. So Cinder, so she volunteers Cinder 
to be a test subject because they can test cyborgs. Because cyborgs are actually immune because they're cyborgs. They're basically, you know, robots or human computers. And, like, part machine, part human. Well, well, Cinder's part human, anyway. And she, um, she, it turns out that she's immune, but she's not just immune because she's a cyborg. The scientist on the whole, the, on finding the antidote for this disease is, discovered that she is lunar, and that's part of why she's immune. And, of course, Earthlings hate the lunars. So there's, she's dealing with, you know, the fact that she's cyborg, and she's lunar, and that what is Prince Kai gonna think, because he start, she starts to like him and stuff. And that's basically, that's what it's about. And the second one focuses on the red, on a character that's supposed to be inspired by Red Riding Hood. Okay, so, anyway, I'm reading, I'm reading that one, and I'm also reading Heartless, which is a retelling of, well, not technically a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, but it's about, it's an origin story of the Queen of Hearts. And I got the hardback edition. I do not get, I don't do boxes, description, subscription boxes. So I just got this, or I didn't get the pretty white version. I did get the regular version that's sold in stores, hardback edition from Walmart. So it wasn't terrible price wise. Um, although my dad, I think he was the one that paid for it <laughs> um, for me. So I think I love this, and I love the hardback because the hardback it's not plain. I re I don't like plain hardback editions, like the plain naked covers. So it's really cool because this one has this on one side, a crown on one side, and then the love interest, Jess, the court jester, the court joker, his little hat on the on the other side, which I really, I love this. I think that is really cool. And then I'm also going to continue with um, Harry Potter. I started reading Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and as long as, and I definitely need to get this one done. Because last time I tried to do my first time rereading the series, I kind of stopped at this one in the middle of this one. I, re I read it, but I, I didn't get very far in it. And I'm thinking it might have something to do with the fact that it's so angsty in the book. It's so, it's so much drama in this one, and it's very, I mean, it still has humor, but it's very, you know, it's it's a tough book to read. It's a tough one, because not, not the length, but just what happens in this book. Because Harry's going through a hard time, and... He's, you could say he's going through PSTD, because if you read the fourth book, you know that he witnessed Cedric Diggory's death, and he saw the ghost of his parents, and, you know, he saw Voldemort's return, and Voldemort tried to kill him, and he tried to duel Voldemort, and just, he went through so much by the end, in the, at the end of the fourth book, which is kind of, I feel like the fourth book is definitely a, tr a transition book from childhood to adulthood. And the fifth one is just so, such, has such drama in it, and it's, like I said, such angst in it. So maybe that's why, because it wasn't as, it was kind of more, like, hard, you know, more tragic. And, I mean, it was still fun, it's just so much negative, negative energy is in this book, I feel like. So, but I'm definitely going to finish it, so I can continue the series, and actually reread the whole series for the first time. So this is, and as you can see, I already, I listened, I started by listening to the, bring in the audio, because I decided not to bring this book with me when we went to South Carolina to visit family for Christmas. So I just listened, I brought the audio book instead. So I read the audio book, and I got as far as a chapter on Professor Umbridge, so she's a teacher at the Learning Gangs, the part where she gets to be a teacher. So I'll have to update on that on Goodreads. And like I said, I already mentioned Scarlet. I'm continuing that. So there's those those three books I'm reading. I'm reading, I have a lot. And I'm also going to continue with Um, this is the second book in the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes, Rebel Spring. I'm going to continue with that one. Um, it's basically, they compare it to Game of Thrones in the fact that it's about these these kingdoms all being, all fighting for power. 
and it's from different perspectives and different people from each of the kingdoms, kind of the people kind of caught in the middle of this war between them, between all the kingdoms. Like you have Magnus, who is the prince of Limeros, um, and his father is this greedy bastard who want, who takes over the other king, all the other kingdoms. He becomes the the ruler of all three kingdoms, and he gets a son, Magnus, who is secretly in love with some a woman that he once believed was his sister, but then he finds out that she's not his sister. So it's not tech, so at first it seems like incest, but it's not. Um, who it turns out she might actually be a sorceress. But Magnus, I think magic is outlawed in Limeros. And he, in the second book, he's arranged to marry Cle Princess Cleo of Aneronis, who is the last remaining royal from her king of Aneronis, the true heir to the throne. So she's trying to make get back her kingdom. I'm trying not to spoil it too much. And then you have Palingia, who is more, which is a kingdom that's more, um, like, I keep thinking of, like, Africa, you know, or even maybe, like, the kingdom, you know, the, some of the places where Daenerys Targaryen goes in a, a Song of Ice and Fire series, where, like, deserts and something, like, maybe where the Dothraki live, kind of, that's what I think of when I think Palingia, um, in that one, in that part, you have Jonas, who is starting, to, who is starting a rebellion against the king, um, the king, um, Magnus's father. So actually, it kind of spoiled a little bit in the fact that Magnus's father has taken over all three of these kingdoms. Sorry. And then, like I said, you have Lucia, who is still struggling with the fact that she is a sorceress and magic is outlawed. So this is the second one in the book. I finally got started on the second one. I read the first one last year, so now I'm reading the second one. And then I think I'm going to try to read Gallery Darkness later this year. And then I need to buy the fourth book. I don't know if that the fourth book is The Crystal Storm or something else. I don't know. But I did hear Crystal Storm is not as good, and now the series has gone, has gone downhill since. But I'm still going to continue it. Honestly, because I have my opinions tend to be go against the grain at times, or I try to. And then I finally am getting back into reading Queen of Shadows, the fourth book in the Thorn Sarah J. Mess's Throne of Glass series. If you watched my Christmas haul, you will know I got the Throne of Glass coloring book, and I also got the Akatar one as well. It's been a long time, I've, you know, I started this a while back, so, and I need to continue it, so I'm reading this one. This is the fourth book in the series. Um... Like with that, that like with the Fallen Kingdom series, I can't tell you much, but basically it's about this young woman, Selena Sardathian, who she was, she's the best assassin in all of the the kingdom where they live, and she's been, but she has been thrown in the prison, um, the prison camp of, um, what was it? I'm trying to remember, Ando Andover, and the king needs has the sign he needs an someone to protect him like a, a protector so the young the prince decides to find out that selena who selena is and everything she's in there he goes to an endover and offers her to to join in this competition for for the king's protector a king, the king's assassin and she will get her freedom and she will just the the downside is that she has to work for a tyrant the king that she hates and the first book is Throne of Glass. It's basically, the first book is all about competition. But as the series progresses, like, the, the first three books, or the first two books, are, like, Selena being an assassin or anything, but everything changes in the third book. And then the whole the typical fan, epic fantasy YA, there's this war going on and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And this is the fourth book. And there is this whole controversy on controversy on Kale, the character of Kale, and a lot of people, you know, like you either hate him or you love him. Character, I'm a Kale lover. I'm a fan of his, and that's why it was difficult for me to continue with the fourth book, because he does some, you know, dumb stuff in Crown of Midnight, in Era of Fire, and it's just people are kind of mad at him. But the most recent book that came out 
gives Kale a redemption, actually. So, and a lot of people that didn't like Kale before or stopped liking him like him again in the for in the um in that last book, Tower of Dawn, which is a book about his character. So I'm gonna continue with the fourth book and then I gotta read Empire of Storms and then I can read Tower of Dawn, which I'm gonna I'm probably gonna buy it for myself. I didn't ask for that for Christmas, but I did not get that, and that's okay. I'll just buy it myself. Okay, so some other books I'm in the middle of. Um, one of, like I said, as one of my, if you watch my reading goals for this year, I said I want to read more novellas and, um, short stories collections. So, this is one of those. This is Kelly Link, the one I mentioned her in that video. She writes, I think she writes magical realism mostly. Um, so I want to continue with this. I've already read two stories from here. I read The Summer People and I See Right Through You. The Summer People I understood, but I see right through you was a little confusing. The Summer People was just about this girl who goes, to, I think it's something like this girl goes to this house and it is a secret, this special house or something. Like this group of people live in, I, it's, I need to, I'll have to come back and reread those. But, um, I see right through you is, I think it's about this Hollywood couple that dates on and off and like, the guy plays a vampire or something? I don't know. I mean, at first I thought maybe he is a real vampire. But then he seemed like a normal guy and he went out in the sunlight and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know. But I've started Secret Identity. Um, and so far, what this is, is this girl is, I guess she's a teenager and she secretly had a relationship online with this older man, Paul. And she's been exchanged. She almost had the chance to meet him, but she chickened out. So now she's writing all these emails as if she's talking to him. Now I don't know if she's going to send them or not. I don't, but or if she did send them, and this is what she sent him. I don't know, but that's what it is. Um, and like I said, that is called secret identity. Like she takes on another persona, pretends to I think be her older sister. So I'm going to continue that. Like I said, this. Kelly Link tends to write mad. I think she writes magical realism from what I read so far. Um, and I also have her collection of called Stranger Things Happen. Strange Thing. Um, something like that. So I'm going to continue with that. And then I want to read. I want to continue with this. Um, the Secret History of History by Don Tart. And I also bought the Goldfinch from the used bookstore. Um, so, so far, what I, I've read a lot of it so far. It's been slow progress, but it's about, like, this guy who goes to a prestigious college in Vermont and get mixed and decides to, tries to join this, joins this, um, class that studies Greek, but this particular teacher only, he only wants the students to be all about, you know, focus on his class, mostly. So he, it takes him a while, but the, the main character, the main protagonist, Richard, joins the class. And the class is full of people that are, like, very, you know, it's this group of people that are pretty well off. And they keep to themselves mostly. They're kind of seen as snobby. And they're just obsessed with Greek, cult Greek and everything. And a group, well, Richard was going on, was on his own Windsor holiday, the group get, you know, decided to try out this ritual they got mixed up in, but then something goes wrong during the ritual, and they end up killing someone. They murder someone, and one of the members of the original group, Bunny, was not there at the time, and he kind of feels a little left out. He's pretty, he's kind of jealous of Richard and his relationship with them, and he's mad at them for not letting them, and he doesn't take it very seriously. And he's constantly giving them a hard time. He gives them a hard time about this. And that's why I've read so far. Some people do argue this book is a bit pretentious. But I've, always, I've never had any problem with reading books about people that are, you know, better off than I am. In, in that sense. Financial, in that people, you know, go to these rich... I mean, I like reading books about those kind of people and... I really enjoyed it. And I love Donna Tartt's writing style, how descriptive she is. 
and it's very enriching and I just this is just a really good this is a good story and I want to continue it and then I also finally got around to starting this was a popular popular book a while back called Night Film and I wanted to get it I've been wanting to read it I saw it at the used bookstore so I bought it I think it's like a psychological thriller where this guy is investigating the death of this famous filmmaker's daughter and he writes a lot of weird films and stuff and people blame he's like he's a journalist i think and the guy the night the director is blamed for causing his daughter to either commit suicide or had murdered her himself or motivated her you know and that's what this so far that's what like and that he's ba and the journalist guy is trying to figure to find this out to find out if it's what actually happened i haven't got very far in it it's really it's really cool because this is another one of those mixed media books where it has like internet articles that help tell the story and phone conversations and just it's it's a it's a cool setup and I definitely want to read more books like this. Like I'm probably gonna at some point I would like to check into Illuminae. But I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait a little while before I get to that one. Who know I mean Okay, so those are all the books I've already st well there's also this one. Um, like I said, I also brought this up in my resolution video, resolutions for 2018, and that is Elfquest. This is a comic, a graphic novel that my friend has been trying to get me into, my best friend Terry has been trying to get, get me to get into a while back, and as you can see, I have started it, but I kind of took a break from it. Um, but she's been wanting me to get more into it. Well, actually, I'm a little bit beyond that. I'm the whole thing with the trolls. I just realized that um, we, we have where the two are kind of the part with the kids, two of the main elves of the story. I really like this. I've, when I read it, I really enjoyed it so far because, you know, it's a different take on elves. It's not just the cute little small the ones that look like children or the elves that are with long beards that make cookies and toys and stuff or the elves that are all slender and beautiful like lord of the rings elves it's a little different it's kind of a mixture of both those kinds of elves and i feel really bad because i keep telling my friend i'm gonna read continue get back into it and read more of it but i haven't so um so i'm gonna continue this one as well I'm going to read a little more. I don't know. I probably won't finish it, but I'm definitely going to read a little bit more of it. Because I do, I am interested. Okay, let's see. The rest of these books I have here are books I haven't started yet, but I do have bookmarks in them. Okay, so this book, I read the first book, The Legend. This is the second book in the series. Um, this is a middle grade novel, series, middle grade series. Um, it is about a boy, I think he's like 13 or something, or 15. No, that's the other one. The other series, the boy is 15. I think this one, he's 13. It's about this kid who is half elf, half human in, in the world he lives in, and neither the humans nor the elves accept him. And he's living with his biological father when his father who makes um, saddles, like, this is a world where... The um, world is protected by dragon riders. So it's kind of like in the her inheritance cycle, in a way. And one of the dragon riders, one of the more famous ones, goes to his father, goes to the kid's father, and is, you know, wants him to make a saddle. And then he sees the kid, um, Javid, that's his name, Javid. And they call him Jay, I, I believe. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right or not, but. Um, he sees Javid and sees something in him, like, sees potential in him. So, he volunteers to be his sponsor at the school, to go to this famous school for dragon riders. It's kind of a boarding school type place. And Javid, despite his heritage, gets to go to the school and he is training to be a dragon rider. And he, you know, makes enemies, but he makes friends with his, one, with one of the one of the kid one of the boys who decides to become his roommate instead of the other another boy who doesn't already hates him. And Javine, of course, and of course, you know, he finds out that his sponsor, someone, is trying to kill his sponsor. So it's about him and his roommate trying to figure this out and protect and help save and protect their sponsor. 
Mr. I can't remember his name. At the same time while he's training. But I mean, this is fantasy, so something like that is is going to happen, you know? It, the story would be boring and would be interesting if it didn't. So this is the second book in the series. Um... Sorry, I was just reading the back of this. So, I'm going to continue that. Okay. So, let's see, what else do I have here? Alright, length. I got, okay, so, I got the fourth book for Christmas. The, um, the Raven, this is the Raven, the third book in the Raven cycle. I got the fourth book for Christmas. Because I was kind of waiting until I got the fourth book before I continued the third book. Because I've already read The Raven Boys and The Dream Thieves. And I just, I love this series. I love how she, um, Maggie Stiebarton writes. I still probably will never get into her Shiver series because I'm just done with paranormal, paranormal stuff. And although this is kind of, well, no, this is more magical realism. And, but I do like how she writes. And I want to check out her All the Crooked Saint series. I want to look into that too. But this is the third book in the series. So, in case you're curious, um, this series is about this, um, this girl, Blue, Blue Sergeant, who, she comes from a family of psychics, but she has no psychic ability herself, but she has the ability to amplify other people's psychic abilities. Like, that's, I guess that's, in a way, her psychic ability. Like, she doesn't have a literal one, but she can amplify other, other people's abilities. And she has always been warned to stay away from the Raven Boys at this special prestigious, you know, prep school. But then she gets mixed up with a group of them, um, led by Gansey or Richard Gansey the Third, or Richard Gansey the Third, yep. And him and his friends, um, Adam, Adam Parrish, um, Noah. I don't remember his. I want to say Noah Shaw, but that's not. That's the guy from the Mario Dyer series, which is not a series I've read, but I keep hearing about it. Um. Noah, I don't remember what Noah's last name is. Noah and um, Rowan. She gets mixed up in turn, and um, him and Gansey are. I mean, Gansey and his group of friends are trying to find this famous Welsh king that has been dead for years, but really he's just in a in a deep sleep, and if you wake him up, he will grant you a wish. So all these, um, so it's basically. Gansey and his friends are trying to find this Welsh king, and Blue decides to get involved in their little group, even though she's been warned to stay away from these boys, and she found out from a psychic greeting that, from one of her aunts and or mother, that if she, she kisses her true love, then, then he will die. And it turns out that that true love is Gansey. So she's trying to resist him, and she doesn't and she's trying to, you know, but she just can't help it but be one of the, she's drawn to him, and she's also interested in what their, their little, their search, and gets involved with it, and wants to help them figure this all out. So, this is the third book in the series, like I said, and I bought the Raven, I got, I didn't buy it, my sister bought it for me for Christmas. I didn't want to get into the third book until I had the fourth book in my hands. I don't like waiting that long for a book in the series. I always have to get at least the next book in the series. So I'm going to continue that one as well. I'm going to not continue. I'm going to read that one as well. Okay, so these last three books I have here. Okay. I hate when I have a cold. Like I said, they're worse health problems out there, but, you know, cold is still really annoying. Okay, so this one, Jonathan Strange, Mr. Norrell, is one, luckily, I saw this at the used bookstore, so I had to buy it there, because this was probably, like, either three or four dollars, 
three dollars, actually three dollars, because I think the smaller paperback ones are cheaper, or like three dollars or two dollars. So I immediately had to jump at the chance of getting this one. Because if I got it at Books a Million or Barnes and Noble for that matter, it would not be. Um, it would probably be like ten, twelve dollars, or seven, seven, eight dollars. So this one was a little, it was a little cheaper there. So um, this is like two magicians are compete are like. It's basically two magicians are it's competing or something, and there's actually a television series I think that came out about based on this book. Uh, I don't know if it's you know I don't know if I can still access it. Maybe it's on one of my streaming sites because now I have a connection to three streaming sites. I already had like I have a, I can access Netflix using my sister's account. And my mom has Amazon Prime, so I have her access to her account for that. And my friend Terry gave me her account information for Hulu. So I have three places where I can watch stuff like this. So I have not started it, but I put a bookmark in here anyway. But I haven't, I haven't started this book. So I want to continue with that one. I like magicians, and I like historical fiction, and although... I'm trying to read more of historical fiction that isn't just in medieval times or 1800s, although this is in the 1800s, I think. But I want to read more that's kind of like early, like turn of the century and like 1700s, like in between the medieval period and the 1800s and the 20th century. So I'm going to read that one. And these last two books are historical fiction. And the last two books are also set in the 1700s. Um, this one is, I think, it's during the Civil War. And it's about, from what I read on the back, it is about this famous, like, southern general who is trying, he's like a disgraced general, I think, and he's trying to find a new wife. And he finds one, this woman who accepts him for who he is. Um, and I think Larissa, my best friend Larissa, has this one. I don't know if she's ever read it. But I saw it and I was like, oh, I think she has that one. So I had to get it. And like I said, I'm kind of more interested in this time period. I'm trying to get, I'm definitely getting more interested in this time period. Um, so, and I'm currently living in the, in the Carolinas. So close to the south. Um, I'm in, I'm kind of in the south, so even though this is North Carolina, I think it's still considered a southern state, I think. Because Virginia, it's right before Virginia, which Virginia is a southern state. Um, yeah, they're not upset. Like, I just found out from someone, one of our friends from South Carolina who lives there now, who just moved there, to Virginia. He's all, he, you know, was, I heard him telling my mom that he doesn't, like, in South Carolina, you see the Confederate flag all the time. But in Virginia, you don't. They're, they don't make it as big of a deal that the South did not win. And they're not as, you know, proud about it. But then again, maybe they're just not as... They don't agree with some of the South's the values they bestowed on themselves or whatever. But, yep, yeah, so I want to read this. And she also wrote... This author also wrote... Or this... Or not... Not a she... He wrote The Widow of the South, too. And this, this person, this author could be, depending on when this was written, this could be a male author. I mean, a female author as well. Um, because sometimes, you know, female authors like J.K. Rowling wrote, has written some detective novels recently and under the name Robert Galbraith. So, but no, it's, it probably is an actual male author. Um, now this is a female author, and if you know your history, you know all about, you've heard of Benedict Arnold, who was, um, the saint, was the guy who betrayed America and, you know, joined, was a traitor to America. And this, this was really, that condemned him, and I think he hung or something, I think he got, he hung, got hung. 
the, I don't even know if that's the proper way to say that. They hanged him, I believe. And this is about the woman behind him, you know, his the his wife. You know, like I said, it's the traitor's wife. It's about her and how she really was the orchestrator of him betraying his country, betraying America. Oh, and Philippa Gregory, who writes the, the Tudor series, did a blurb. She, um, a most impressive debut novel. So this is this either this is Allison Pataki's first novel, oh, and then Mary Clark Higgins. I think she writes a lot of mysteries or something. Um, I consider this to be to be the debut of major writer of historical fiction. So I hope I feel the same way. That's this is good. Um, it's definitely a New York Times bestseller. But, um, like I said, I've been trying to read more books about, like, the 1700s as well. Because I do like that period. I love the clothes, although I don't like the powdered wig. The powdered wig look is weird to me, but again, you know, they didn't have the same kind of hygiene we do today. Like, a cold was not the worst thing. And they didn't even, when they had a cold, they didn't even have anything to, like, cure a cold, like, the kind of medicine we have today. Like, uh, they don't have Ben. They didn't have Benadryl back then, and like I, I'm able to take Benadryl every, you know, so th to help me feel better. I want to read more of that. Okay, so those are the books I'm hoping to read. There are probably other books that I'm hoping to read this month, but I don't know if I'll even get to all those. I'm just gonna, you know, try to get them read as fast as I can. But still, well, not as fast as I can because I still want to enjoy them. I'm gonna get, and it's all about quality, not quantity. Like I said, this isn't a competition for me. It's more like I just can't decide what I want to read. <laughs> and there's books that I just bought that I want to get to like right now, but then there's books that I've had for a while on my shelf that I need to get read, so I can't decide. So that's what it's more about. The reason why I put so many books on my TBR is because I just can't decide which one I want to focus on right now, which one I want to read. So I'm gonna have to some of these books. I'm gonna have to pick a, a book out of these books, like at least three, because we might be going out of town again. Because my grandmother, the one who lives in South Carolina, her birthday is this month, and this weekend we might go up and see her and visit her for that, and like or just meet up halfway and meet her in Florence and um, have dinner with her. So, so anyway. So unless, you know, so either we'll do that or we might stay, like, overnight at her place. I don't know. Anyway, that is what I'm hoping to read this month. Um, like I said, I probably will not get to all those books. But who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky. But, I mean, I'm, re I'm working tomorrow and I'm working Thursday, I think. Or, or Friday, maybe. I, I have to check. I'll have to, go on I'll have to go online and check. I mean, not online, on that piece of paper I printed out on my schedule. I'll have to check and see if I'm work what day I'm on. Because I know I'm working, no, I'm working on Tuesday. So, tomorrow. I'm working tomorrow, and I'm work I think I'm working Thursday. But, my shifts are only four hours, so I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not, I don't have eight hour shifts because I'm only part time. So, I still have time to read when I get home. So, anyway, what are you guys reading this month? Um, do you do, do you even do TBRs, or are you going to try something different and not do a TBR, or are you going to do, like, a different kind of TBR, or have you never done TBRs, and maybe, I mean, the only reason why I do TBRs is because there are books that I've neglected to read, and I want to, I want to get to them, so I'm going to, I put them first, but I have failed at that since, since I started this last year. But I'm going to try this year to get to the books I've neglected. Although, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not off to that good of a start. Because a lot of these books in here, I have not. It's not Well, Elfquest is one I've neglected. But, anyway. I really hope you enjoy listening to what I'm going to read this month. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't. Um... And if you are passing through and you were just watching my video and you haven't subscribed to me, please subscribe to me. If um, That is, if you like to listen to me ramble about my books, about my books. And I will talk to you later. Alright, bye.